Hi, it's Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm continuing my build of my Voron 2.4 R2 Pro Plus printer. Today I'm going to work on the initial steps of setting up the frame, so let's go ahead and get started. As I mentioned in my last video, I have a project log with references on my website, so you might find that helpful listed all the various references I'm using and the parts, everything else. And I'm updating this as I continue to make these videos. So this might be a reference you want to use. And it's my attempt to at least consolidate all the references in one place so it's easy for me to find. Now the big reference I'm going to use for the build today is the Boron 2.4 R2 assembly manual. And I'm starting off by looking at the building the blind joints and putting together the frame. If we look through here, I'm just looking at these initial steps. The big thing I'm going to have to do, basically lay out all my parts. So what I'm going to do is go through my big old box of parts, part of this form box kit, pull everything out and put it aside and then we'll take a look at what we got. So give me a second and we'll switch over to my desk. As you can see, I've laid out all the extrusions, 10 of extrusion A, four of extrusion B, two extrusion C's, one extrusion D, and one extrusion E. And this is all based off of the Boron assembly guide. If I go look more carefully, I also need these M5 button head cap screws. See those, so I've pulled those out. So this is the start now, looking at the directions, I'm going to need to start putting the screws in the end of the extrusion A's, eight of them. That way I can do that for the blind corners. So let's switch back over to the manual and take a look at that. In reviewing the manual, it looks like I need to insert the screws. And so they're barely, maybe a couple millimeters from the end. So what I'm gonna do is clear off my workspace, prepare eight of these and I'll do at least one or two on camera so you can see how I do it. We'll check how they fit and then move forward from there. So for this part of the build, I have several tools. I have a square, I have a little squarish block here. Let's try to square things up. I have my driver and my screws. I'm gonna to need to start with eight of these pieces. And what I'm gonna do is take a screw and basically just screw it in the end here. For right now, I can hand tighten this. I'm gonna want this on both sides. Now, I believe I wanted about that far. Now, let's sort of test this. And I'm looking at this piece here. You can see I got holes throughout. What I'm going to do, basically, I just slip this in. This should be something like this. And then I'm accessing it through the hole here. I'm going to get this squared up. I'm just going to hold it like this, square. And then I should be able to tighten it. So let's here, try tightening this up, and I'm just going to hold the square it's up. And I got that tight. That looks correct. I'm checking it, it's nice and squared off, so that looks correct. Let's look at the direction. So I have that first piece on. I'm going to continue right now. I need the screw on the other side here. So let's just get this in. I'm going to just hand tighten this for right now. Now I'm reading this is a really cheap and easy way to make really strong joints. So 
So that looks good right there. I'm going to do one other piece. Well, it's screws here. And get this in. I watched a video that somebody had to tap these holes. I'm really grateful that I don't have to do that. This is already done as part of this screws in. Let's just get the other side. These are going in really easily. We'll just keep screwing them in. You can see how I have that there. And if I'm reading the instructions correctly, I'm basically going to slip this piece down like this. Again, let's try squaring this up. Going to go through hole here and tighten that. So now I have this corner together. So pause and let's look at the next step. And I'm sure we're just going to keep putting all these corners together. So that's nice and easy. Okay, so I'm going to take another A extrusion. I'm going to move things around. So I'm moving this A extrusion. And let's get the screws on both sides. As I said, I'm just following right along with the instruction. So now, posts here are my B extrusions. I'm going to lay this one down like this. Grab another B. I'm going to set that like this. And let's get my square. Try to square this up. And I'm just going to get my driver, tighten that. I want to come back over here. a little bit because I don't need the blocking. So let's put the square back down here. And I'm just going through this corner. Right now, this is looking nice and square. Now, I'm going to turn this. Grab another piece here. And let's get our screws into these. It's again, the A extrusions. So I'm just screwing the screw in here at the end. There's the screws are in both ends. Let's get a B extrusion. Again, the B extrusion are the ones with the holes on either end. And those are my access holes, so I can tighten. So we're going back down in this corner. I'm going to slide this in. And my square in here. Hold this together. Tighten her up. Now, I'm going to take this piece, slide that in like that. Let's get our square again. I just got this square at Walmart. It's $4. Um, I'll link to something on Amazon. In fact, what I'll try to do is link. I'll make links both on my website and in the video description of all the various tools I'm using. I said, I just have this little square block to help as well. Yeah, you can see that. This is my last B extrusion. I'm just slipping this through here. And that's caught both. I'm just going to hold this down. Tighten that. And tighten this side. And now we have the base and the posts put together. 
Now my next step, I want to do the top here. We're going to take four of our A extrusions, and I'm going to put the screws on there. Let me put the screws in here off camera, and then I'll switch the view to the top here, and we can go over installing the top portion of the frame. So let me pause, get the screws down here in the A extrusion, and then we'll proceed. Yeah, so what I've done is just flip this over, and this way I can sort of square it with my table, and then just leave these sitting down. So let's see if we can... Just gonna hold that, and then tighten this, and then let me go ahead and put in this side. Like I said, I'm, this is a fairly easy process. Pretty straightforward. So it seems, tighten that up. What I'm gonna do is rotate this around this corner. Let's just get all these blind corners tightened. And I believe I still have to do this corner over here. This last corner needs to be done. So the main part of this frame is together. So let me look at the manual and we'll go to the next steps. So it looks like on the last two A pieces, I need to put a corner bracket, and then a, an M5-16, so the same screws I've been using. Let me go through my hardware bags and find these corner brackets. So I found my four corner brackets. So. They were actually in with the extrusions. I didn't see them, but I have those. So let me add that to my parts list of parts I've used, and then we'll continue on. What I'm gonna do is take my two last A's here, and let's get out the corner brackets. As you can see, we have two holes on these. Doesn't matter which way they go. And let's get four screws out. All we're doing is I'm going to take these, put the screws in. Actually, I want these tight. As you can see, have that in there. To the other side, and I want these equivalent to the slant going the same direction on both sides. As you can see, got those on both sides. Let's now do other A extrusion. Get this in. So now I have this all done. This center. These are going to go something like this. Now, what I need to do is make some measurements and we'll look at the assembly guide and try to figure out where these need to go. And then we'll measure it out so they're placed appropriately. So it looks like we're gonna to need to pull out a couple other pieces. We're gonna need M510 button heads, M5 shim, and then M5 T nuts. So let's go ahead and get those parts out of the box and then we'll start placing things and figuring out exactly how they need to be measured in. Okay, so I have my M5 T-nuts, my N510 screws, button head, and then my M5 one millimeter spacers. Put these over here to the side, and then are going to go in here, but let's see if we can sort of look at what the measurements are going to look like. Let me switch over to my display, and it looks like I need to measure the midpoint of the printer, which in my case should be 255 millimeters. Let me get my ruler out, and we'll try to measure that and put a mark on the printer on the extrusions. I realize it's a little hard to see, but 
measuring out to 255 millimeters. Mark a line here. And so I have a line on the printer. And then we just need to go 65 millimeters on either side of that line. Now let me measure the back here. So I have a mark in the back. Or better yet, I'll just do the front first and then flip the printer around once I have things screwed in. I can deal with that. I have my line. And now I need to go 65 millimeters on either side of that line. So what we're going to do is going to measure. five centimeters and I have my lines I can barely see them so hopefully I think this will be covered but even if it's not it's not gonna mess and gonna look ugly so let's first put in I'm gonna put in the T nuts and I'll start with the first one Flip this in here. Then I'm just going on the other side of the other measurement here. Flipping these in. So I have those two in. And then what I'm going to do is get this all lined up. Let's put the screws in. I'm just lining these up with my lines I put on the printer. As I'm, now, as I mentioned, I need to put a shim in here. So that's these little M5 washers. And then the screws here. As you can see, I'm just doing this. I'm not going to tighten this too much. I don't know where I tighten it too much. That right on the line like I want it. I'll tighten that. Now let's do the other side. So I'm again just taking the screw, the shim, put those together. Let's see it. And just going down through here, screwing this in. Initially, I don't want it too tight. I want to be able to slide a little bit. So I have the front end. Now what I'm going to do is turn the printer around, make my measurements on the other side, and then screw it in. But instead of doing that on camera, I'm just going to do that off camera. And then we'll come back. Well, as you can see, I have bottom pieces in. So I'm just going to take a look at the next steps. And at some point, I'm going to call it a night. But let me just see what the next things are I need to do. I just would like to get tonight the frame completed. And then we'll start on whatever the next steps are. So looking at the manual, I've completed the frame. Now I have checked for squareness. But if you need help with that, there's a helpful video in the assembly guide. In my next video, I'm going to start working on the Z drives. So if you have any questions or comments on putting together the frame, please don't hesitate to reach out. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Have a good night. This is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15 minute help session with me and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.